Late jazz trumpeter Miles Davis, himself a legend in music, said, A legend is an old man with a cane. The legend is an old man, but he doesn't brandish a cane, rather a laptop. In a Lego Ella Senior, FNIA, is a prolific Nigerian architect, most known for his organic structures. Ella was born on October 13, 1939, in the rural suburbs of Otupo, Benue State. Young Inalegu Ella had his primary education at Benue Middle School Katsina Ala between 1947 and 1950. An early image of vast expanses of land and water bodies an early part of his childhood imagery indeed the impression of many young men from the middle belt of that time he showed an early aptitude for learning and was among the few that would enjoy the western education at a time when several of his contemporaries would join the armed forces he obtained his o levels at Kefi Government College from 1953 to 1958 and went on to the prestigious Amadou Bello University, Zavia, for his tertiary education. Graduating in 1964, the first set of BSc Architecture graduated in 1963. As a young architect, fresh out of the university, Inalegu Ella worked with the Ministry of Works, Northern Nigerian Government from 1964 to 1968. Rising to the position of Assistant Senior Architect, he also worked as Chief Architect from the Benue Plateau Government, contributing his quota to national development. By the year 1970, he established Ella and Associates the firm became Ella Waziri Associates in 1975. When his classmate Musa Tanko Waziri became a partner, the company later reverted to Ella and Associates when the firm relocated to Jazz from Kanu in 1992. Late architect Musa Tanko Waziri FNIA had been in civil service like his friend rising to the rank of chief architect of Kanu State before retiring to establish one of the most successful partnership architectural practices in Nigeria. Known as Empty Waziri in the nation's building industry, the late Waziri was a member of the Nigerian Institutes of Architects Board of Trustees. The fruitful partnership with Ella ended when Ella relocated to Jas and he established Musa T. Waziri and partners in Kanu. Architect Ibrahim Haruna, FNIA, and past president of NIA regarded the deceased as his father, also described him as a very calm gentleman. He mentored so many young architects, including architect Namadi Sambo, former vice president of Nigeria. Many successful architects accept the conceptual envelope of a given building type, perhaps pushing it 
In certain places, Ella has dared rethink the whole package, including what he calls architecture for the user, the architect and the society. Ella is an architect of complex sections, just as he does not expose structure for the sake of shape. He is not a formalist about space. Right now and globally, we are looking at coronavirus and as architects, do you think that we are maintaining a very good social distance? Well, uh, I'm not very sure about that, but uh, the pictures I have seen from television about the coronavirus issue shows me that uh, there's a very big, uh, there's very big uh, need for more space in our cities. Did they choose architecture for you? Did you choose architecture? You grew up in a time where you were either a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. And um, you left out one, this, one, one, one of them. Okay, teacher. Well, you left out another one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, at that time too, there was um, going into the army was a very yeah. one of the top things. That's right. And I actually thought of going join, going into the army. I wanted at least to take an exam, pass it, go to to train overseas and then come back as an army officer. Then I was told that, uh, that the, our principal in Kefi Government College wanted to see me at the end of my course. And when I went, he said, no, I will not permit you to go join the army. And I said, what? That is my choice. He said, no, I should first train as an architect, and after that I can join the army. And that's what I did. And he said, if I supported it, being an old major in the British Army, he will influence the army here to throw me out. And that is why I didn't go. Wow. So, and uh, he asked me what I wanted to do. I said, my first subject was architecture. After that, I said I would do, I would go to the military. If there was nothing available. Now for how many years? Well, well so since 1964, if you can calculate that. Yes, that, that's quite a while, and I think that's long enough for you to be able to tell us if we are going into decline or we are moving in the right direction. Well, I believe that we are moving forward. But whether the direction is right or wrong is another question. Wow. Yeah. What are your thoughts on using computers for drafting? Do you use it for design or do you use it for drafting? Or both? Both. Both. So there's both. a whole issue about using CAD in the schools. And I know now that ACON is very uh, strong about first uh, principles, which means that you could use the computer to draft, but you should be able to design with your freehand sketches and appreciate the skill. What are your thoughts on I that? Say, I still do, do uh, freehand sketches. Okay, so you. And I, th I believe it is the best. If you don't sketch uh, and you are using the computer, it means, uh, it means you are just copying. You have to sketch something before, yes. you, before you introduce it to the computer. When I went to uh, ABU, right, in 1959, 
our class was the biggest class that they had ever, ever entertained. And uh, we were just about 20 or just a little bit above 20. We picked up some people who repeated their class and so on. Up, uh, apart from us, there was a class ahead of us, Volari, Wa and Co. They were ahead of us. They were less than 20. Ahead of them was uh, uh, architect Shemu uh, and architect, uh, I think, I think uh, they were two only. They were just, uh, they kept uh, uh, cutting down people. There was architect Shemu, architect Dokin, yeah. and so on. And then um, after them, which will be like the year four, there was uh, Mbaronye and somebody else. They were, the two of them made a class too. And um, then the fifth class, that is the first school to qualify, they were there. I was there when they took their exams and everything. And there were four. Yes. That was <laughs> there were four. Like there were four only. And so you can imagine what uh, the situation was. It's not, they are not full classes as you know. Yeah. And I think I think I think um, this was uh, caused mainly by the British people who came, and they were a mixture of people that came. They were not all British; they came in different uh, distances. Others think that uh, we are not, we cannot, uh, you know, qualify as architects, so they kept dropping people along the line. So the class of five, of five, I mean five classes that I'm talking about. Um, I don't think we were up to a hundred. No, not we're not in, no, not up to a hundred. Mm. So if you can imagine two, two, four. Two, two, four is eight. Mm. And then the two of us were not two, the other two classes were not up to fifty. We're not even forty. We were not uh, up to forty. Wow. So you can imagine. So let us say 40, about 48, the five years. 48 is not even the number of one class. <laughs> one class, yes. yes. That's what it was. When you talk about details, I remember one of your friends who is no longer with us. I'm talking Wait. about architect Alabi. Oh, architect Alabi. Yes. yes, I every day. I mean, every every time I think about Alabi, I always think thought about he's he's he's, he's, he's going. Um, I was discussing with him some projects which we could get some of our our boys, our actual our boys involved in. We were talking about that, and then we were promised to meet soon. And then he was gone. That was how I sort of uh, lost him, if, uh, if you have to say it in a colloquial language. If you were to have a favorite building, I don't know if that's a fair question to ask you. If I'm to have your favorite building of all the buildings you've done, which building would be your favorite and why? Mm. I've ne I've ne I, I never thought, I haven't thought much about this. Um, it will be one small building, like, you know, back in those old days. Not with so many. Uh, uh, designs and all that, but very simple. Really? Yeah, I, I, I was thinking maybe you talk about the Bank of the North building, which is still uh, the same bank, of, bank. of Kano, or even the Nigerian Embassy in New York, which you designed. I'm not sure if many people know that. Or even here in Jos, the Martial Arts Chief Juma, yes, which you uh, did very you... Yes, um, I don't know, but they don't feel as personal 
as the smaller buildings. Uh, this okay. is why. The smaller ones. Mm. Okay. And then uh, you put a lot of yourself into it. And have you done any work, major work in your home state, Benue? Where? Benue State. In Benue State? Mm. If you would call the Benue, Benue uh, Hotel. Okay. A major, a major, a major, a major building. Then that would be. But it never, it was never, uh, it was never fully financed. Let me say that is a, that was the greatest uh, hindrance, and I think it's not fully finished till today. Wow. So, what do you feel about your unfinished projects? Every architect has a project that may not have gone the way they wanted. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. There are some we know we were never finished. We had, we had to go, go away from it. And um, well, we just mentioned uh, Benue, yes. the hotel. It was never finished. Um, Bank of the North in, in, uh, in Kano, for instance, was a very big challenge. Before that time, you, you know that there were very few buildings of that size in Nigeria. The general uh, opinion was that, uh, by the public, of course, was that um, Nigerian architects couldn't produce that. And so, when this came, we made sure that nobody from anywhere touched it. It's wholly our design. Nothing from any paper or any photograph or anything. And um, that is what I enjoy about it. I know all the details. Wow. Right, yes, right from the foundation to the top. The foundation we now, we turned into an, uh, an uh, underground, uh, underground space. And, and the bank uses it as a storage of some of them in very important documents. Wow. Yes, and um, the reason we did that was because on finding out that the soil, because of the soil there, the building needed a, a fairly deep uh, foundation. We then said, why do we have this big foundation and that space in between doing nothing? So we now converted it into spaces. And then they became uh, underground uh, spaces. I think two two floors down or so, oh. if I still remember. And then I also say, okay, what what we will do on top? Are we going to follow the others and try to impress people? No. So you could you can imagine seeing me sitting up on that in that place in that place all the time, making sure that they do exactly what I wanted. And I, I, at that time, I used to climb to the top, and uh, there were no staircases. So I think it's quite, uh, it was quite an experience for us, and it was done very quickly because they wanted it very quickly. The poetics of structure in an ala and associate building, including the forces, their convergence, their expression are based on light and shadow, a major characteristic of plasticity in design. Finished in 1988, the tallest office tower in the north may project technological prowess, but occupants know the building better for its neighbor intimacies. This building has a strategic position in the approach Kano City from the south. From Prukno Ogunshote 2002, it closes a vista of the main road and is well seen from a long distance. The primary structure seems to be separated from the base. It appears unexpectedly light as if able to turn round its axis. The sculptural element in the very top, from a kind of object pointing to the sky, high quality materials and good finishes add to the aesthetics of this building. Abstracting the northern knot, Ella Waziri Associate 
opened what is usually a closed form, creating an armature of change, seemingly twisting the tower on its axis. Little wonder this building, in many ways, is not only considered the trademark of the practice, but a significant example of plasticity in Nigerian modern architecture. Many architects dream of designing a high-rise building with all its complexities. That dream was realized with the Bank of the North Headquarters, the tallest building in northern Nigeria. But Ella Waziri went the extra mile and designed a high-rise building in New York, a city that has one of the most stringent planning regulations in the world. The ability to design landmark buildings like Nigeria House, New York, rests in part of the infinite principles of plasticity. Ella designs with light and shadow using sculpting as a critical issue. Light and shadow are a significant consideration in the design of this skyscraper where sight lines, setbacks, and shadows were paramount. Uh, what can I say? Um, I say a lot of things. <laughs> um, you see, architecture coming from um, Daddy's perspective is almost completely different to what is happening now. And sometimes we have um, conversations on how the practice of architecture is. And um, I just feel that um, in Daddy's time, maybe probably because of the, the influence of the British, they, they had a lot of, um, what word can I use? They, they had a lot of uh, finesse. They did things well. So the, the Daddy and his contemporaries had to produce designs and the designs were built well and they were to standard. But in this day and age of our own practices, it's almost as if just knock buildings out and even if you design something that isn't um, up to standard, in quote, it still, it still gets approved. Inaligu Ella Senior has a large family and is a father with many children, words and mentees. He is also a grandfather. He makes his home in Jos, Plateau State Capital. Ever the caring person, he has a wonderful tree swing which the neighborhood, children and visitors enjoy. It's one thing to build a legacy of buildings. It's another to build lasting legacy of relationships to live on in the hearts of loved ones for generations to come. Yeah.